four harms of dating. The first negative consequence of dating, brothers and sisters, is that it has proven that dating has a negative effect on your education. This is not my words. There are studies that were performed. They bring classrooms, schools. They divide the students based on their dating status, not marital status, not dating status. If you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you're in a relationship, stay on this side, stand on this side, the other one's on this side. And then they look at their grades. What they have noticed is that the individuals, the students, and this is in middle school, as early as middle school, what they have noticed is the students that have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they do much worse in school than those that don't, than the single ones. It's not a coincidence, they, it's a study. So they do it, they do it so many times until they know that the cause of this is what? Or one of the major causes is the fact that they are in a relationship. And there was a study done by the University of Georgia. This study said that what we notice is the students that had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they did significantly worse in their school. Significantly worse. Not a little worse. Significantly worse. And number two, this is what the study says by the University of Georgia that what we noticed is those that used to date, they were four times more likely to drop out of school. Four times more likely. Why? Only because they were dating. So number one, go Google it if you don't believe me, University of Georgia dating. So number one, it has a bad effect on your education. Why? And of course, if it has a bad effect on your education, the study said, and what we noticed that those individuals that start to date early, at the end of their lives, you know, after they grow up, they don't get good jobs. They don't get, they get the low level jobs. Because if you're not doing good in school, you're not going to go to a good college, you won't get a good job. So it will affect your career just because you are dating. Now why is this? Now they don't mention the reason, of course. But one possible reason is because what? Is because when you start dating at that young age, of course, this is time consuming. You're going to now with all the, you know, with the, with the what, text messages, you're going to spend four hours a day text messaging your loved one. I love you. I love you more. Yes, this, whatever. Let me buy you a gift. You're going to go out with your boyfriend, girlfriend. You're going to spend so many hours with that person, correct? All at the cost of your study time. You should be studying in those hours. You're going to spend it behind the computer or behind the iPhone, just texting and sending messages. So this is one. Another reason is because don't think that always, you know, these love relationships are always going to make us happy. They're going to have their bumps, correct? What if one day the girl or the boy is dumped by the other? This person is going to have one week of, he's going to be heartbroken. He can't function. He can't concentrate. He can't study. He can't do anything, correct? These 11, 12, 13 year old kids, they can't bear the responsibilities and the, you know, the complications of of these relationships. So that's why many times the toll is taken by what? By their studies. Because it's more than they can handle. Of course, he's not going to be prepared for the test, for the exam. So this is number one. Number two, the second according to the study, the second harm of dating is what? Not only does it negatively affect your education, but number two, dating, it negatively affects your behavior. The same study done by the University of Georgia, and I saw another study done by the University of Toronto in Canada. They both said this, that dating number one, it, they noticed that those children or those teenagers that were dating, they were much more likely to lie and cheat. They were much more likely to lie and cheat just because they were dating. And number two, what they noticed is that those teenagers that were dating, they reported twice as much alcohol, tobacco, and marijuana use. So those students that were dating, they reported twice as much drug use, alcohol use, tobacco use. Brothers and sisters, do you know how plagued our societies are with these problems, with drugs? Every community I go to, they tell me one of the biggest problems we have with our youth is drugs. When they go into drugs, this destroys your life. It destroys your career. You end up in gangs on the streets if you don't overdose and probably kill yourself. If you don't commit suicide because of the depression that it causes. Every form and way in which my life could be destroyed is through drugs. This study of two universities is saying one of the major causes to drugs for these young ones in school is what? Is dating. So if we want to eliminate these harms, we have to go to the roots 
And one of the roots, we're not saying the, the only reason why people go into drugs is dating. This is one of the reasons. It helps. They're twice more likely to what? They reported twice as much alcohol, tobacco, and marijuana use. So this is number two, the harms of dating. That's why we have to be careful our children in schools and what they teach them. This is number two. And then number three, we go to the third negative and harmful consequence of dating. And this is not just for the young ones, but for everyone. When they ask why Islam is against dating, why Islam says dating is never a solution, is because dating can lead to many complications in marriage later on. You see, many of us, even the individuals that date, they say, I'll get married one day. Dating has been proven to complicate your marriage later on. Do you know that? Why? You see, when we start young, remember we said one-third of 11-year-olds are dating. When we start to date the first time, you see, we're very sincere. These young ones, they're very sincere. They are very innocent. They're honest. They trust everyone. And when they start dating, they express their true desires and their true feelings. And now, how does dating happen? Most of it happens online. So the guy, when he likes this girl in his class, he doesn't go directly. Now it's, there's a much easier way. Go to Facebook. Find her profile on Facebook and give her a like. That's step one. Now when that girl, she's 11 years old, it's the first time she's gotten a like from a boy. Now what does she think? Oh, this boy loves me. He wants to get married to me. She's 11 years old. She doesn't know any better. She thinks this boy is going to be her happy husband for the rest of her life. Because he gave her a like. She's so happy for a week. And then he sends her, you know, those emojis with the kissing emoji. And now she's sure that this person should be her husband. So now what does she do? Now she's fooled into opening her heart. Now she sends him a message. I like you too. And then she tells him, I love you. So what does he do? So he sends her back a message and he tells her, I love you also, I love you more. Now what this poor girl doesn't know, 11 year old girl, is that this guy is on the computer and he has five screens open, he's doing copy paste, I love you, I love you, I love you. But this girl doesn't know, she's 11 years old. Or it could happen to the guy, the guy could be speaking to her and she's doing copy paste to him. This poor girl thinks she's the only one and she truly thinks this person will marry her because she's innocent. She knows better. She doesn't know any better. She has no person to guide her. No person that told her, be careful. Don't trust everyone. They trust anyone. And that's why I always say, brothers and sisters, social media is very, very dangerous to our children. So this girl, once again, so he tells her, I love you, but you know what? He tells, he sends it, he, every day he tells a girl, I love you. But she does not know that. Or he does not know that because it's their first time. So what happens to this individual? This individual thinks that he's in a true relationship, that she or he is in a true relationship, until a few months after that, or sometimes a few days after that, they find out that they weren't the only one. Do you know what happens to this child? Their heart is shattered. Their heart is broken. They're devastated. They become suicidal. They don't want to eat for an entire week. Oh, because I thought I was the only one. It appears I was not the only one. There's 10, there's 15, oh, just like me. He was playing me. He was fooling me. Or she was fooling me and playing me. They're devastated. Now, but what happens? Now they're scarred. Now that they're scarred, they want to go back again and date because this is what you do in America. You just date and date. And you have to have a date, always. Now that they go a second time, they're a little more what? Reserved. They're a little more careful, correct? Because they've been what, bitten once. They go a second time, but the second time they also have some problems. They're also fooled. The, the guy dumps them, whatever. So now they're scarred a second time. And then they go a third time. And, and the more they go, the more careful they become. Because they've been what? Their heart has been broken so many times. Until the sixth, seventh time, or the tenth time, they begin to what? They begin to mistrust everyone. Any man that comes to the girl, she begins to become suspicious of him. Oh, why, does he, why is he speaking to me? Is he one of those bad individuals that has 10 girlfriends? Does he just want to abuse me? Does he want to misuse me? All these, what? All this suspicion that comes. Likewise, the man thinks, that, oh, does she just, for example, want to benefit from me in a certain way from my money? Whatever. So we become what? We become so suspicious and we begin to mistrust everyone. Now, what does that eventually do? Eventually, when I grow up and I want to get married, I begin to develop a long list of conditions before I get married to anyone because I have been what? Because I've been hurt so much, I want to make sure that I'm no longer hurt. I have all these insecurities. So I begin to develop a long list of conditions. I want my wife to have this, 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 this. 
500 conditions. I want my husband to have 700 conditions, 10 conditions. Why? Because I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be naive anymore. I have to make sure he has all these qualities. And brothers and sisters, the more we add to the conditions, the more difficult marriage will be. Sometimes I see in the communities, certain brothers or sisters, they want to get married, but they have such a long list of qualities. I tell them, brother, sister, maybe this person doesn't even exist. You'll have to search 10, 20 years. You won't find them. That's why we're getting, made at, we're getting married at such a late age. And you ask some people, why don't you get married? I haven't found the right person. You'll never find the right person with this attitude where you put 20 conditions. Why did he put 20 conditions? Because of his dark past. He doesn't want to be hurt anymore. You see what dating does to us? It creates this insecurity within you. I will not get married. And then once this happens, marriage will get postponed and postponed. And once you get married, what happens? Once you get married, you tell the wife, I have all these conditions. Every day you keep on adding a condition. If you don't like it, get out of the house. Problems rise. They mention, you know, that there was a woman that went to a shop and they were selling men in that shop. This is only a joke. Don't, you know, don't worry. The store doesn't exist. They were selling men in that shop and she wanted to go and buy a man. So she sees there's a sign. There's a rule in the store. What's the rule? There are six floors in the store and each floor you go up, you'll find different qualities. But however, the golden rule is if you go up, you can't go down. She says, okay. She goes to the first floor. She sees a sign. It says that all the men here, she sees lots of men on display, they have this quality. They're religious. She says, okay, but that's not enough for me. She goes to level two. Level two, she sees a sign. All the men here are religious and they're what? And they're good looking. She says, okay, that's better, but I want more. She goes to the third level. All the men here are religious. They're good looking and they're wealthy. Okay, this is even better, but I want more. She goes to the fourth level. They're religious. They're good looking. They're wealthy and they're good with children. Okay, this is even better, but I want more. She goes to the fifth level. All that was uh, in the previous levels, good looking, wealthy, religious, good with children, and they're strong physically. So now she's tempted to accept and buy, but then the greed once again, we want more and more and more. She says, let me go up to the final level. She goes to the final level, she sees there's absolutely no men, it's empty. And then there's a sign, it says this level only exists to prove that you will never ever be satisfied. You'll keep on wanting more and more and more. Now this is probably a joke, a story, but this is true for many people. They're never satisfied because they're hurt so much in their lives. They keep on adding conditions, conditions, conditions. So I'm losing time, brothers and sisters. This is number three. And finally, number four. What dating does to us is that it increases the chance of divorce later. How? You see, like I said, when you're dating, you're not bound to any what? You're not bound to any contract, correct? You could leave anytime you want. This is what dating is. That's why we don't get married sometimes because we don't want to be in a permanent relationship. I want to leave whenever I feel like it. Now, since you are in, in this type of relationship where you're not bound by a contract, there's nothing forcing you to stay with that person, then you can leave whenever you want. Let's say one day you're dating a girl. You see another girl who's more beautiful, who's prettier. What's going to prevent you from just dumping her and going to the second one? There's no divorce. There's no, con you never said I won't leave you. You never said that because it's, a, it's just a dating relationship. It's not marriage. There's nothing to prevent you, correct? I don't want, I don't want you anymore. Too bad. I want the other one. It's so easy. You know, the, you just leave her. There's no divorce process or whatever. Since there's nothing to prevent you, this is going to encourage you. You're not going to be afraid of leaving, changing. If you change once, you're going to say, you know what? This girl is more beautiful. But then, then again, there's a third girl. That girl, maybe she's better. And then you're going to change a second time. And a third time. And if, that's the nature of dating. Have you seen some person that just dates one person? No, you date, you try out everyone. You try out 10, 20 people. And that's why I read one statistic that said, an average American dates before they get married anywhere from 7 to 15 people. So you keep on changing. Now once you keep on changing 3, 4, 5 times, what happens? Eventually it becomes a habit. You become addicted to changing. Now, now that it be, it's become a habit, you think all of a sudden you could just settle on one woman and get married to her? You think you could just settle on one man and get married to him? Your whole life you're used to changing, changing, changing this man to this man, for this woman to this woman. All of a sudden you want to settle on one woman for the rest of your life? I don't think so. It'll be too difficult because you're so used to changing and changing and changing. And this leads to two problems. What? Number one, when you get married, you'll feel like you're in a cage. Because before that, 
you were so free. I could change whenever I want. And I changed so much. Now, I'm stuck to this woman for the rest of eternity. Or else I have to divorce. And if I divorce, I have... Correct? First of all, you won't be too happy. You'll, be, you'll, feel, you'll, be, you'll feel like you're stuck. And number two, what will, what will this do? The second thing that this will do, you'll begin comparing your wife to the other ones. You see, if you had 50 girlfriends before, now you're married to this girl. You're going to say, you know what, number seven, she looked a little better in the morning. Number 18, her smile was nicer. When I, when I say jokes, number 28, she laughed more. Brothers and sisters, the more the selection, the harder is it for you to be satisfied, correct? If you've had 10 cars before, and now you buy a car, you're going to start comparing it to the old cars. Oh, the cushion was, you know, was more comfortable on that one. The pedal was softer. The I don't know what was, correct? Versus if they brought you a, a car for the first time of your life, you have nothing to compare it to. You're going to love it. It's a car. It could take me from point A to point B, correct? The more the selection, the harder it is for you to choose and be satisfied. Try it with anything. Go to a store. The more the selection, the more you don't know what to buy. This is what marriage done to us. This is what dating does to us. Because I've had so much experience with this woman and this man and this woman and this man, I'm going to keep on comparing my wife to those individuals. And the likeliness of me being happy with my wife or my husband will be less and less and less. Because I'll keep... When I run into a problem, will I try to solve it? Not necessarily because I say, you know what? The problem is in her. Because the other one didn't have this problem. Versus if you're a rookie, the first time getting married without any dates... When you see a problem for your wife, what will you tell yourself? You'll tell yourself, you know, all marriages have problems. Let's try to solve it. The more you have to choose from to compare to, the less likely that you will be happy with it. And that's why many people, they opt for divorce. I'm just not happy with her because I have so much to compare to. I'm running out of time, brothers and sisters. And that's why we have to teach our youth why it is very important that we don't go down this road, this road, this route. It will bring nothing but what? But sadness, sorrow, will affect our education and behavior. So if we understand that and teach that to the youth, they will willfully refrain from going this way.